What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2001 Volkswagen Golf. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Golf for two reasons. First of all, it's not the GTI, it's not the Golf R32 of which I've driven, but I like also reviewing the more average stuff, the more normal stuff that people like you and me would be in the line to purchase. And so I'm excited to share that with you. But the second reason is that this is super, super pristine for its age. Every Mark IV Golf that I drive or see is chopped up, hacked up, chewed up and spit out. And this one has somehow survived not only the test of time, but the test of multiple teenagers. And so I'm excited to share this little gem with you today. But if you'd like to share your gem with me, you can head on over to my website, zachbrettle.com submit. Quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out. I come out to you and you get a video of your car, just like the one you're watching now of this Golf. But let's get back to that two liter under the hood. Well, there was a 1.8 liter turbo option and of course the VR6 and the R32, but this is the average run of the mill two liter non-turbo. It makes about 122 horsepower from the factory, which isn't anything crazy, but I also don't feel like I'm endangering traffic while driving this car, which is, well, a nice feeling to have. Like I said, paired to it is the four speed automatic and this is where the wheels fall off the wagon just a little bit because the owner bought this vehicle and drove it for about 3000 miles and then the transmission grenaded itself. Apparently it's kind of common with these transmissions that they go around 100,000 miles. So it needed a rebuild, needed a new transmission, and so it has it now, and it's sitting pretty happily. But something to look out for, if you see a high mileage Mark IV Golf that has transmission issues, just know that that's pretty standard, unfortunately. Last but not least, this Golf is front wheel drive. So how does it feel to actually drive the Golf? Well, it's a very economy experience. First of all, the visibility out the front window is great what I expect out of a vehicle like this. Steering isn't too heavy, isn't too light. The throttle is decently responsive. However, there's about an inch of pedal play where the engine is revving up, but it's not going any faster. So that is just lack of torque from the engine, which is a little bit noticeable, but honestly, with your music turned up, you're not gonna notice it at all. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. Off to the left, I have my tachometer. Volkswagen's very funny. They always do this in tens instead of hundreds. In the center, I get my coolant temperature and fuel. And off to the right, I get my speedometer. I really like how the gauges are laid out, very clean and simple. And and they're easy to see at just a glance. The steering wheel doesn't actually have any forward facing buttons. Now I do have cruise control, which is on a stalk to the left, but that's it. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, my gauge dimmer switches, and my headlight switches. Moving onto the door, I do have power mirror adjustments, power locks, power windows, and my little child lock in the center. I don't know why this logo of a person with a circle around it is always just funny to me. So I always get a good little chuckle. Then moving into the center, we have two climate control vents, the hazard switch and rear defrost. Then we do have a pop out cup holder. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Mark IV Golf. And if you are blessed with the gift of sight, you could easily recognize that this will not pass the big friggin' bottle test. I didn't expect this car to, but we still have to test it. <laughs> Then we do have an aftermarket radio because most radios from this era weren't that great and don't keep up with modern tech, so you gotta swap it out. And then we have the climate controls. Temperature off to the left, fan speed in the center, where to send it off to the right, of course, with my AC and recirculating buttons. Then we do get an ashtray and 12 volt outlet and the shifter itself. I've always found it funny that Volkswagen randomly used chrome around their shifters in this era. That also goes for the Jetta and Tiguan and vehicles like that. Just sort of an interesting little side piece, I guess. And then we do have the physical parking brake down below. We do get this little center armrest that does open up, which is very nice to see and feel. And then we gotta talk about the seats. Now, these are the basic seats. They are not the leather seats that would have come in an upper trim level. However, me personally, I actually prefer cloth seats in older vehicles like this because these cars did cloth right. It's this really shortcut cloth. It's very comfortable. It's very warm. And living here in the Midwest, we get some cold, cold winters. These seats are so cozy in the winter time. 
I love it. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the Mark IV Golf and I don't really fit back here. Now I am a big guy, that's to be said. I always test myself. The barometer for my back seat reviews is if I can sit behind myself, this is my driving position and it's a little hard. However, the passenger seat is moved up a little bit, which would make life a lot better. So the best place to be in the Golf is the front seats. However, I do get the same cloth as the front seats carried on back here, which I really, really like. So I might not fit, but at least I'm warm and cozy. So that's nice. I do get a opening ashtray. Kind of looks like it might eat me, but that's pretty cool. I would get headrests. They have been removed and these seats do fold down for more cargo space. But speaking of cargo space, let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks. Right around the back of the Mark IV Golf from 2001. And here is the trunk. Now, obviously this is an added subwoofer, but Besides that, really love the trunk space that you get here. Volkswagen has always been good. Going back to the 70s, at least from what I've driven, the oldest I've driven is a 70s Volkswagen. They've always been very good about the interior packaging of their vehicles, meaning lots of cargo space for a little car. It's larger on the inside, as they say. I do have my medical kit and roadside kit behind that, and I can pull this up and I do get a spare tire. But ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Look at how clean that is. Look at how unrusted and unfilled with water that is. That is why I wanted to drive this car so bad. Very, very cool looking at the back of a Mark IV Golf. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I have always, always, always felt an affinity for this generation of Golf. I grew up around these being born in 97. These were very common for me to see. I had a lot of friends in high school that had this or some type of version of this. And so this 100% classifies for macaroni styling, which is a term I coined describing a car that isn't outwardly very super pretty, but it's blobby, it's warm, it's comforting and has that nostalgia with it. Much like how I grew up on Kraft Mac and Cheese when I was a kid, I get that warm sense of nostalgia when I look at this Golf. So it definitely looks good in that respect. And as you're noticing, this car is super well kept. Even for its almost 150,000 miles, it looks almost showroom fresh. That is why I wanted to film this video so bad. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a 2001 Volkswagen Golf? Well, I have to say that this experience has been overwhelmingly positive. I've really enjoyed driving the Mark IV. And let alone, I've been enjoying driving a non-performance oriented Volkswagens. I recently drove the new Golf R. I've driven the new GTIs and I've driven the old GTIs and the old R32s. And they're very fun. Don't get me wrong. Those cars are great. And I recommend them to a lot of people but this car is basic this car is the negative space negative space is a term in art where you actually use blankness to your advantage take a look at this shot yes the mark IV is in the shot but with all of the added space around it it gives you a different feel it makes the mark IV seem small and unimportant with the green on green, maybe it starts to blend into the background. So this isn't a photography YouTube channel, although I once tried to make it be. This is a car YouTube channel. What I mean by that is that old Volkswagens, the old buses and Beetles, they were very good at highlighting life around you. Those cars were good at telling other people's stories through their own avenue. The 1973 Volkswagen camper van that I reviewed was solely built so you could see the world. It it wasn't meant to be stared at. It wasn't meant to be put up on a pedestal. It was meant to help you see the beautiful earth that we live on. That's how I feel about this Golf. It's unimpressive in its driving characteristics and style, but there's something beautiful about that. The owner, Preston, this car allowed him to meet up with friends, to go to after school activities. He could park it at a friend's house, at a sleepover, on the street, overnight, not worry about it. Have fun with his friends and experience life rather than sit and worry. I drove a 1985 Mazda RX-7 in high school. That was my high school car. And you might think, Zach, that's a really cool high school car. And I'm not gonna lie, it was. But 
Anytime I parked that at a friend's house, back in my mind, I would always think, oh, is this thing gonna start up when I leave? Oh, what if someone comes and sideswipes it? It's my pride and joy, it's my baby. And there was a time where I had a sleepover, walked out the next day, car wouldn't start, car wouldn't start, car wouldn't start, and I had the super fun experience of getting picked up from my friend's house in a flatbed tow truck. Well, that's a lot less likely to happen with a vehicle like this. This car helps you experience the world and highlight its good parts rather than show off and show you what it's capable of. And that's why this Volkswagen Golf is the epitome of negative space. It's not a negative car, and on the contrary, it does a very good job of wiping negativity away. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Preston for letting me take out his Mark IV Golf. Such an awesome time capsule and just piece of Volkswagen story. I was incredibly excited to drive this vehicle. Preston was absolutely awesome to work with. Very knowledgeable, very down to earth, very kind family he comes from and I can't thank them enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.